Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He, together with me, my daughter, Luisa. And we are talking about uh, how to protect the containers running on RKE cluster in three minutes. So let me hand it over to Luisa. So. Thank you. So, so you can see here that we have previously created a series on how to back up containers in around three minutes and all of these different services. And the focus of today will be to do that via a Ranjo Kubernetes engine. So backing up containers on RKE. And if you do not have an RKE cluster yet, you can follow these links to see the videos in which we have create an RKE cluster via Rancho UI and also to build a Rancho server via Terraform in all about a few minutes. And to verify if the RK cluster is up and running, you'll need to download the RK cube config from Web Council, then verify the cluster using these two commands shown. Now, in order to prepare the environment, you need to follow these three steps by firstly deploying Longhorn CSI driver with this command, next to clone the repository from Yong Khan's GitHub page. And finally, to change to the RKE K10 folder and run this command, the RKE prep. So here you see that will take about three minutes to deploy and after you run this command. So now we're gonna do the quick demo. So for today, we've actually already gone through the previous steps of the get nodes and prep. So as you can see here, you just confirm that you've created a one node cluster. And to verify that you're actually using the rancher, to, you can initiate this get namespace to see that you are actually in the cattle system. So now we have to deploy this command here, and it should take about a minute to two. So while that is being deployed, I'll explain a bit about what the command is actually doing. So firstly, we are installing the custom K10 program and also deploying the PostgreSQL database. In addition, the command is creating an Alibaba Cloud OSS, which is the object storage server location profile. And it's also creating a backup policy for the PostgreSQL. Last but not least, the deploy command is kicking off an on-demand backup, well, various on-demand backups immediately. So if we check, this should be about a bit longer, not too long left. Yeah, it might still take uh, one minute or so. Let's uh, come back to the slide deck here. So once the job deploy finished successfully, so basically the whole steps are fully automated. It only take uh, about three minutes. Once the job is finished, you're expecting to see the backup jobs already kick off when you log into the web console. And once the backup job is completed, we will simulate a disaster by delete the original namespace. And then we will also do a restore from the object storage and followed by how to configure backup policy for the newly restored applications. So let's come back to the VS Code terminal to say, yeah, it just finished. So Luis, do you want to, you know, continue to take us to the web console? Yes, thank you. So you can see it's finished and displays both the token and the link to actually log on to the K10 web UI. So we will double just copy this token 
and then go visit the web UI by following this link displayed and that will open up this new window here. We'll just enlarge this one. And here you just simply have to fill in the email address and company name. Just take a second to pop up. So gonna use this one that we have pre-filled in. And then you just click on the free download now. Oh, it's complete complete both fields. Here we go. There we are, finally. And free download now. And that should take you to the dashboard. And here, you can see that first we just dismiss the notification and also this one. So yeah, I'll hand this back to dad. Awesome, thanks Louisa. So as you guys can see, you know, with the automation, we mix the backup of the containers running on our keys. Very simple, very easy. So in just about uh, two minutes, we already deployed a custom K10. We already deployed a sample database. And the moment that you log into custom web console, you actually you already see the policy has been created. The application, the sample database, the PostgreSQL has been deployed. We actually already have two restore points. So that means our backup jobs are already finished. And let me show you how to do a restore first. Then I will show you the backup details. So I click the restore. So you've got two restore points. The first restore point is from the long home primary storage. And the second restore points are from the object storage from Alibaba Cloud. Okay. So you can choose from any one of the restore points to do the recovery. As I mentioned earlier, I want to simulate a disaster. Uh, let's say uh, the primary namespace is, is gone, how I can recover. So let me come back to the Rancher UI. I will find my previous, uh, my main namespace, PostgreSQL. I select the namespace, which was created five minutes ago. I'll do the delete. I will confirm the delete. And then once I confirm the delete, so I will wait the job uh, disappear. So basically wait the young dash PostgreSQL namespace disappear. Once this has been completed uh, removed, we will show you how to do the recovery. So for now, let me come back to the ports. We will monitor the ports of the namespace. Uh, actually the PostgreSQL was gone. Now let's come back here to do the recovery. So because your primary uh, snapshot, your source volume has been gone, the namespace has been deleted, you can't restore from the first copy. Uh, most likely your uh, snapshot from the long home storage also gone. So what we can do is we allow it to restore from the exported copy. So I select the exported copy. And then if you don't want to do any advanced settings, you just do the restore but you need to choose a namespace. You can choose an original namespace, the existing namespace, or you create a new. Let me create a new namespace. Let's say yon PostgreSQL dash new. It doesn't have to be exactly the same namespace as the previous one. I make the new namespace. Click create, and uh, I'm gonna leave the rest of the advanced settings as it is. Before I click restore, I really want to show you the advanced uh, granular individual spec artifacts recovery. So what I can do is I can deselect all the artifacts 
if I know somebody deleted secrets or configure maps, I can just select the secrets or configure maps and do the restore, which is more efficient, more, you know, I can bring up your applications up running very quickly. So for now, let me reselect everything. I will do the restore to a new namespace. I click restore, confirm the restore. If you want to monitor from the dashboard, you can click the dashboard. You can monitor the job will be kicked off here, but why the job is running, you can also monitor from a launcher UI. So what I can do is I can select the new namespace, young dash postgresql dash new, and I can monitor the status. Scroll down to the bottom, you can see the container is creating. They were uh, creating the affinity port, which is the temporary port. Once the temporal ports will uh, finish, so we will restore to your production port. Okay, while we're talking, the restore port containers kick off and we will bring up the production containers shortly. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, PostgreSQL is already running. Now we're doing the readiness check. It's so quick, yeah, just within you know, a few seconds, the PostgreSQL is already up running and it is uh, passed the readiness check already. So come back to the web console, you can confirm the restore job has been com completed successfully. Now, if I come back to the applications tab here, so you can see we've got a new application just recovered. It's called yong postgresql new, but we don't have a policy yet. I'm going to show you now how to create a backup policy. Create a policy and uh, give a policy name. You can select the action type you can set the backup of frequency. You can leave it, uh, I want to just leave it as hourly, but if you choose hourly, you do have the advanced settings. You can make it every five minutes to do the snapshot backup jobs. So most importantly, uh, you might also, we always recommend to enable backup via snapshot export. That's where you can always have a separate copy from or away from your data center, from your storage. But you can also customize your snapshot retentions. But if you're happy with that, just leave it as it is. So once you've done all these settings, you can click a create a policy. Or if you want to you know, create the policy via the YAML file or via the automation tool, you can click YAML, we actually generate the policy creation YAML file for you. So you just save the YAML file. Here is a copy button. And then you just run from the command line, keep a control, create, or you know, apply minus F in the YAML file, we will create the backup policy for you. So for now, let me click uh, create a policy. So we created the backup policy. And uh, if you want to, if you don't want to wait for next scheduled job, you can click a run once. Once you confirm a run policy, come back to the dashboard, you can see the backup jobs that has been kicked off. So for now, I'm not going to wait the job finish, but I will show you the existing job. So which we already finished earlier. If I click the job details, you actually, uh, you can see since we removed the original namespace, the backup job is actually already gone, but the export copy is still here. If I click the export copy here, on the right hand side, you can see all the details of the job. Okay, let me come back to the dashboard just to show you the backup job still running and uh, the snapshot, it's almost there. So part of the backup job, we actually have you know, three subtasks. The first subtask is doing the backup. We're doing the snapshot of your application. We're doing the snapshot of your configuration. We're doing the snapshot of your data. If I click the job details on the right-hand side, you should be able to see all these spec artifacts. That's why when it comes to the restore, we allow you to select the individual resource and do the recovery. So that basically covers all the uh, demo for today, how to configure a backup policy, how to do the restore, granular restore, or restore to a new namespace. Let me come back to the slide deck here. So we already showed how to simulate a disaster, how to restore from our object storage or how to do the backup of the newly restored database. So if you've done, once you've done all of your testing, 
and you don't want to, you know, the cloud provider keeps charging you. So what I developed is uh, I got the k 10 destroy command. We are going to destroy, clean up the environment. So basically k 10 destroy, we're going to remove PostgreSQL, remove custom k 10 and also remove the object storage uh, storage bucket. And a few reference links here, if you guys are interested to know a little bit more. And if you guys are coming next, that's what we are planning to do. So we're going to do a migration containers session to talk about how to migrate the containers from our other Kubernetes distribution, or maybe from other cloud or other on-premise Kubernetes distribution to RKE cluster. So a few additional uh, links. Uh, it's more about uh, you know my free automation tools. Right now, I build the automation tools to cover all top five public cloud. And uh, yeah, uh, also have the few links about uh, how to build, backup, uh, migrate, and operate, uh, op automate the popular Kubernetes distribution, including build a Kubernetes cluster backup containers, uh, how to migrate the containers, and also automate the whole process, including Kubernetes uh, cluster creation and also protection. So for anyone interested, uh, you know, feel free to follow me to join us to learn together. By now I'm 41 times multi-cloud certified, including CK, CK, AD, and CKS. Yeah, here is a few links. Feel free to you know, follow me to learn together. That's pretty much all I want to cover for today. Yeah, I hope it is useful to you. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And please like this video and subscribe if you're interested in learning more.